With the flood of economic illegal refugees flooding our borders, what is your stance on this, and how would you deal with it if if it happens in Alberta? Thanks, Wendy. Uh, so I was Canada's longest serving Minister of Immigration. I brought in a number of reforms, many of them to designed precisely to stop and avoid uh, illegal immigration. Because I, I, I believe we Canadians are generous and welcoming people, uh, but we expect those coming to our country to arrive here legally, uh, having received permission and waiting their turn in the queue and being qualified and invited to enter the country rather than crashing our borders and violating our laws. I think when we, uh, when politicians turn a blind eye to large scale irregular migration, illegal immigration, human smuggling, they end up undermining public support for legal immigration, and that's a very dangerous thing. I think that's one of the reasons we've seen a, a, a backlash in the U.S. against legal immigration because of all the illegal immigration. It's one reason there's been an anti-immigration backlash in Europe because of all of the illegal migration happening along the Mediterranean coast, for example. So I take this very seriously. And Wendy, this is why when I was immigration minister, I brought in ma massive reforms to our refugee determination system uh, to speed it up so that we could remove fake asylum claimants in months rather than allowing them to stay in Canada, often making redundant appeals, delaying their deportation while receiving so generous social benefits in Canada. So I reformed the system and we ended up going from about, about 40,000 refugee claims a year down to about 8,000 as a result of the reforms that I brought in. This helped to save Canadian taxpayers literally billions of dollars. Uh, uh, and I also brought in an important uh, new law in, I think, 2012 called the Protecting Canada's Immigration System Act, which gives the government, now hear me about this, Wendy, it gives the government the power to uh, designate large-scale illegal uh, cro border crossings as a human smuggling incident, or what's called, uh, it's it's uh, basically allows us to the government to say, hold on a second here, this is a highly organized um, uh, incident of illegal immigration. Through that designation, the government can massively accelerate the processing of those asylum claims, begin removing the false claimants as quickly as possible. That immediately sends a signal to other would-be mig illegal migrants that this is not a um, the, the right way to come to Canada. Designating events like the, what, the, the, the kind of migration we see happening across the border between Vermont and Quebec, um, designating this as a human smuggling event would also allow the federal government to um, uh, not give certain benefits to those individuals uh, and to avoid giving them certain appeals and delaying their their process in Canada. And, and so I would be doing now. By the way, we had a pretty large scale, um, well, much smaller than the current situation. But we had dozens or hundreds of uh, Eastern Europeans when I was immigration minister, flying to Mexico, believe it or not, crossing the U.S. border illegally, renting vehicles, coming up to Vermont, and then illegally crossing the Vermont-Quebec border, then to make refugee claims. We I designated these as irregular, uh, as, um, irregular arrivals or human smuggling events, and we fast-tracked these claims through the system. We did not give these people uh, health care benefits or other social benefits and 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 the wave of illegal migration uh, almost stopped overnight so here's the point the people who organize these kinds of waves of illegal immigration are very sensitive to the kind of, of disincentives that, that I put into legislation we just need the liberal government to use that law which they have refused to do <laughs>